logarithmic and exponential functions. Being able to change from exponential to log form is quite useful to simplify calculations and when dealing with inverse functions. Logarithmic graphs are particularly useful when we need to compress large-scale data and represent the data on one graph using a scale that can accommodate a large range of values. Recall that a function is a relation or graph where each x value is linked to only one y value. Graphs that model exponential growth are called exponential functions. As with any graph, the exponential graph can be shifted vertically or horizontally, stretched or shrunk, and reflected. The defining equation of an exponential function is y is equal to a to the power of x, where the base a is greater than zero. There are some important points to recall about exponential functions. The base a is always greater than zero and all values of a greater than one will result in an increasing function. The function y equals a to the power of x is always positive. This means that there's no value of x that would cause the graph to take on negative values. The graph never crosses the x-axis because there's no value of x that would result in the function value of zero. Since the exponential graph never touches or crosses the x-axis, the x-axis or line y is equal to zero is called a horizontal asymptote. The y-intercept will be 1 since the x-value is 0 on the y-axis and any other number raised to the power of 0 is 1. If the value of a is greater than 0 and less than 1, this results in a decreasing exponential function. The exponential function can be reversed by the logarithmic function. Therefore, the exponential function and logarithmic function are inverses. Recall that the reflection of a graph in the line y equals x will be the graph of its inverse. If y equals a to the power of x with a greater than 0, then we can rewrite the function in its inverse log form as x is equal to log y base a. Example 1 converting from exponential to log form. If f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x, then find f inverse of x. Recall how to change from exponential to log form if a to the power of x is equal to b. We can write the equation in log form as x is equal to log b base a, noting restrictions on each of the variables. To find the inverse of a function, step 1 is to swap the x and y values. Remember that another way to write f of x is y. By swapping x and y in this function, you will get x equal to 2 to the power of y. Step 2 is to make y the subject of the formula of your new equation. So now we need to convert from exponential to log form and get y is equal to log x base 2. Rewriting using functional notation, we get the f inverse of x is equal to log x base 2. This is the inverse of exponential function f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. Example 2. Sketching a logarithmic graph. Given the function f of x equals 3 to the power of x, part 1, find the inverse function and write it in the form f inverse of x equals. Part 2, sketch the graph of f of x and its inverse on the same set of axes. To answer part 1, we start by noting that we can rewrite f of x equals as y equals 3 to the power of x. Next, 
Swap the x and y values of the given function and you get x is equal to 3 to the power of y. Then, you make y the subject of the new equation by changing from exponential to log form. So, we get y is equal to log x, base 3, is the inverse of the given function. The last thing to do is to rewrite it as required using the function notation. We replace y with f inverse of x. For part 2, we must draw the graphs of both exponential and logarithmic functions on the same set of axes. We start with the graph of the exponential function, which you should be familiar with from grade 11. We are dealing with an increasing exponential function with a horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0. In other words, the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. To sketch the graph f of x, find the y-intercept substituting x with 0. You get 3 to the power 0, which is equal to 1. So the coordinates of the y-intercept are x is 0 and y is 1. The domain of f of x is the set of all the real numbers and the range are all values of y greater than 0. You can use your calculator or table to work out two other points on f of x. For an x value of 1, the function value is 3. And for an x value of negative 1, the function value is a third. Use these two points and the y-intercept to sketch the graph of f of x. Plot and join the points with coordinates negative 1, a third, 0, 1 and 1, 3, to draw the graph of 3 to the power of x. Label this graph f of x. Remember, the x-axis is an asymptote of this exponential function. Make sure that the graph you're drawing approaches the x-axis but never touches it. There are different methods to sketch the graph of the inverse function. You may use your calculator or a table to find points to plot, or you can simply reflect the graph of f of x. Along the axis of symmetry, y is equal to x. We will reflect the graph f of x to draw its inverse. The inverse of an exponential function is called a logarithm function. The inverse of an increasing exponential graph is an increasing log graph. Also notice the following properties about the log graph and how it relates to its inverse. The coordinates of the x-intercept of the log graph are 1, 0. The y-axis is a vertical asymptote of the log graph. The domain is made up of a set of x values greater than but not equal to 0. The range is a set of real numbers. As you can see, these properties are all inverted properties of the exponential graph, and the x and y values swapped around. Note the following important conclusions. The exponential function and logarithmic function are inverses of each other. The domain of the function is equal to the range of the inverse. The range of the function is equal to the domain of the inverse. The y-intercept of the function is equal to the x-intercept of the inverse. The x-intercept of the function is equal to the y-intercept of the inverse. The asymptote for the exponential function is y is equal to 0 and the asymptote for the inverse log function is x is equal to 0. The graphs are reflected about the line y is equal to x. Example 3. Sketching log graphs. Sketch the graph of f of x equal to log x base 2 and reflect the graph f of x about the x-axis to give the graph of g of x f of x equal to log x base 2 is an increasing log graph with an x-intercept of 1. To find the x-intercept, 
we substitute y with 0, and changing from log to exponential form, we get x is equal to 1. This gives the coordinates of the x-intercept as 1, 0. You can use a table or a calculator to work out two or more points that lie on the graph. If x is equal to 2, we substitute 2 into f of x and get a function value of 1. If x is equal to a half, we substitute x is equal to a half and get a function value of negative 1. Now you have the x-intercept and the two coordinates, which you can use to draw the log graph. Recall that when we reflect on a point around the x-axis, the x-value stays the same and the sign of the y-value changes. To sketch the graph of g of x, reflect f of x about the x-axis. The graph g has the same x-intercept as f of x with coordinates 1, 0. Its asymptote is also the line x is equal to 0 or the y-axis. Its domain is the set of x values greater than 0, and the range is all y values greater than 0. The graph is also the inverse of a decreasing exponential graph and is a decreasing log graph. Let's examine the equation of the graph g of x a little more. G of x has function values that are all negative of the y values of x. Hence, g of x has equation negative log x base 2. We can rewrite that equation as y is equal to log x base a half. g of x is the inverse function of the exponential function h of x equal to half to the power of x. We arrive at that equation for h of x in the following way. Let g of x equal y, then y is equal to negative log x base 2. Dividing both sides of the equation by negative 1, we get negative y is equal to log x base 2. Now, change from log to exponential form and you get 2 to the power negative y is equal to x. You can rewrite the left-hand side of the equation as 2 to the power negative 1 all raised to the power of y. 2 to the power negative 1 is half. Therefore, a half raised to the power y is equal to x, which is an exponential function. Now, convert from exponential to log form and you will get y is equal to log x base a half. Example 4. Logarithms application question. A. If the current rhino population decreases at a rate of 6% per annum, how long will it take for the current rhino population of 29,000 to halve? Round off to the closest integral value. B. If the current rate of decrease is to continue, how long will it take the rhino population to reach 10% of its current population? C. Sketch a graph to illustrate the decline in rhino population illustrated in A and describe the graph you have drawn and comment on the trend in the rhino population numbers. Here's a hint. Rhino population numbers are discrete values. For part A, to calculate how long it will take for the current rhino population of 29,000 to halve, we must use compound decrease formula. The compound decrease formula can be graphed as a decreasing exponential function. Using the formula a equals p times 1 minus i to the power n, with the current rhino population being 29,000, this means p is equal to 29,000. Half the current population will be 14,500. This will be the value of A.
we are given the rate of decrease is 6% per annum. Substituting into the compound decrease formula, we get 14,500 equals 29,000 times 1 minus 0, comma 0, 06 to the power of n. By dividing both sides of the equation by 29,000 and subtracting within the brackets on the right side of the equation, we get a half is equal to 0, 0,94 to the power of n. To solve for n, we must convert from exponential to log form, so n is equal to log of a half, base 0, 0,94. Use your calculator to work out the value for n as 11, 2, correct to the one decimal place. Rounding off to the nearest integral value, which means the nearest whole number, we get n is equal to 12. Don't round down to 11, as by the 11th year, the population has not yet reached half its size. Now, on to part b. To calculate how long it will take for the rhino population to reach 10% of its current population, we once again use the compound decrease formula to calculate the value of n. 10% of the value of the current rhino population will be 2,900. Since the current rate of decrease continues unchanged, that means i will be 6%, which is 0, comma zero six in decimal notation. Substituting values of A, P and I and simplifying the equation we get zero comma one equals zero comma nine four to the power of N. Changing from exponential to log form we get N is equal to log zero comma one base zero comma nine four. Putting that into the calculator, you get n is equal to 37,2 correct to one decimal place. Therefore, we can conclude that it takes less than 38 years for the rhino population to reach 10% of its current population. Part C, we need to draw the graph first before commenting on the trend. Using the values of current population at time zero as 29,500 and the two values calculated in parts A and B, we can sketch the decreasing exponential trend line that represents the decrease in rhino population numbers. Since rhino populations can only be measured as discrete data, you must use a trend line and whole number values for the number of rhino. The graph is a decreasing exponential function. We can make the following conclusion based on the trends observed. If the rate of decrease continues, the trend line shows that rhino will become extinct.